You know, uh, this past April, uh, we have 150 years anniversary signing of the 1868 Fort Laramie Treaty. So relatives asked me to pray at Wounded Knee. So the rider start from Wounded Knee and I follow along, you know. And they went through all the way to before they get to Fort Robinson, uh, cold wind and dark and kind of snowy came. It was cold. But these people camped, these young people. You know, I admire them because they're really, ceremony still began. And I was there with thick gloves on and you know. And then they cut across, you know, towards Nebraska, the back trail, all the way. And I caught up to them again in a, a, car, a place called Elm, Elm in Wyoming. It's just big farmhouses right there. You know, camped overnight, and uh, all this time there was a lot of riders camped, you know. And there was a guy named a Grey Wolf, cook for all the riders and everybody. He's the Grey Wolf and his team, good people. These are all real strong hearted people, the horseback riders, you know, all there. Well, right there, they had me talk about the treaty on uh, big speakers, so I was talking about the treaty, you know. And Robbie Romero did some, uh, you know, entertaining, you know, and stuff like that. It was pretty good that night. And next morning, they all went towards uh, Fort Laramie, the back road again. So we followed them and we went to Fort Laramie. By the time I went to Fort Laramie, I went ahead of them. And when I got over there, teepees built and everybody, many people are out there. It was a beautiful sight. At this time, the sun warmed up. The cold, dark clouds were gone. You know, it was warmed up. It was really... And the young people are still riding, you know. They're still riding. Like how it happened 150 years ago. Ancestors probably all over Crow, Arikara, Lakotas, you know, Cheyennes, Arapahos, they're all going to Fort Laramie because not only signing the peace treaty with the government, they had us, they, my grandpa said they had them sign a peace treaty among the Crows and others not to be fighting. See, that's one thing, that's the only thing, not the only thing, that's one of the things that I like about the 1868 treaty to unite us too, like we were foreign enemies, see? but to unite us, we cannot be going around raiding one another, fighting one another, you know. Uh, so the, uh, when they did that, huh, they smoked the sacred chanupa, the sacred pipe, and they agreed on that, see. Okay, that's uh, one of those good things happened. Anyway, so I went down there, and then we waited for the riders to come in. Young people run in, Church groups during the ceremonies walked in. Uh, the Chinese monks, they walked in, you know, and many others walked in. And here comes the riders, the Lakota riders, Nakota and Dakota riders coming in. And uh, two huge teepees were there, and we stand in the middle, and they circle around there. And they brought, I don't know if that's original or not, but it was said that's Red Cloud's Chanupa, Red Cloud's pipe they brought. My nephew, Wendell Lealabu, carried that, you know. And uh, uh, a little Takoja girl was holding that. You know? So we did ceremony with that. They asked me to pray. So I did pray with that. You know? And they came. And each one of them, the chairman from the Standing Rock, Oshan River Sioux Tribe, has spoken. You know, Mr. Fraser, spoken. Then the, a chairman of the uh, Oglala Lakota here tribe, uh, Scott Weston, has spoken. And a few of the chairmen, they rode too, you know. The chairman, that's the first time that's, a, uh, you know, I was surprised because uh, oh, the tribal presidents, they rode horses. <laughs> never before I've seen this, never before in my life. But uh, and they rode horses all, all the way in. <laughs> You know, and I think that's, uh, I know it's really good. So then after that, I give it a talk and a blessing, and I did the prayers. Me and uh, uh, Orville Looking Horse, 
keeper of the sacred buffalo calf pipe, 19th generation, then his brother. So there's three of us. Mr. Broken Rope, he's the oldest one, you know, of the uh, medicine man. And that next morning, they were supposed to uh, meet with the senators and the higher officials, you know. in the designated area. But when the young people asked me about the Fort Lyman Treaty, and I just set them down, I talked to them that evening, you know. And I said, 150 years ago, our grandfathers came here. 150 years ago, they rode horses, even their grandmas and everybody. 150 years ago, they all live in teepees. They said this valley is full of teepees of all nations, 100, 150 years ago. 150 years ago, you could drink from the river and there would be nothing wrong with you. 150 years ago, there was no fence. Nobody owns the land. The land owned us. <laughs> See, 150 years ago. Today you look around you, we got dome tents. We drive four wheel drives, horse trailers, new trailers. Nobody speaks English. Oh, nobody speaks Lakota. They all speak, uh, nobody speaks the lang uh, tribal language. Only very few. Majority of them speaks the English language. Today, we have what they call it the iPhone. We communicate. Today, we believe in this phone, what it says. We forgot who we are until the phone tells us who we are. See, <laughs> 150 years later. Imagine 150 years more from here, what this place will look like and be like. See? There's probably a law against living and touching on the earth. See? There'll probably be a law for breathing the air without the commissioners or without the people's permit, government's permission. There'll probably be a law for you to go walk around. You will have a mate, an artificial robot <laughs> that does everything for you. That won't be 150 years. That'll probably be like 20. Okay. <laughs> but it will happen, see? So I give them, and they're a really good audience. Really good. They listen. And the next morning, a designated area, like a big circus tent, and everybody's supposed to report over there. So we went over there. And the senators and the generals and the governors are all sitting over here and over there. You know? And I was the third one to be, third one to speak on that paper. See? But again, the propaganda hit the fan, you know? <laughs> See? Because I want to ask them, the senators, I got a few questions for the senators, you know, and the governor. See? But they don't want to, and the generals, military. I had the treaty right there. See? But the uh, Indian political propaganda has served, and then they don't want to let me talk to them until they all left. <laughs> And I said, oh, we forgot. Oh, yes, you forgot, all right. <laughs> See? So the things I want to ask the senators, the bridge of contract of the 1868 for the Laramie Treaty, the other tribal employees, BI employees, park employees, state employees, government employees don't want me to talk. See? 
And that's what happened in 1858. And when I looked around and all this treaty council, this treaty people, only very few came. I seen Orange Shell talk, you know, looking horse talk, American horse talk, you know. So the propaganda was really strong. So, you know, they never, uh, I never get to talk to the senators. Never. And if I have, I was going to ask them. What, how come we are, are 97% unemployed on the Indian Reservation, especially Pine Ridge Indian Reservation? Why? And if he says your tribal council, that's not my tribal council. That is your tribal council. All this IRA, BIA, they're from the branch of the War Department. And they all belong to that. See? And I said, if you have a social security, you're indigenous from the indigenous nation, and if you have a social security, you are subject under the United States federal government. You have nothing to do with the treaty or Indian affairs, Lakota affairs. Because by obtaining a social security, you just sold your sovereign rights away to the United States government. So you're no longer into the Lakota nation. <laughs> So we seen your social security number, like I did, and few of us did. See? We we seen our social security. So that therefore I never I don't get no kind of income from the government. Nothing. Not a thing. Not from the welfare. Nothing. At all. See? So we go into the, the true Republic of Lakota, see? And this is what happened at Fort Laramie. These are the things I wanted to ask them, and many more, the health. What they promised on the treaty, how come we didn't see it? Where did it go, see? But I know where it went. Now I have a good idea where it went. It went into some of the relatives that worked for this, this systems. They're into their pockets so they could live comfortably, not thinking about the people. See? These people, every time election come, they selected him, you know, they treat him like this, give him votes. When they want the votes, they don't care about the people. They care about themselves. See? And the reason why I'm voicing like this is 1998, back in 98, they selected me as one of the, what they call it, the headstone, uh, the headsman of the Lakota, Dakota, Nakota nations at the sacred Sundance. And I took the oath to represent the people and those who cannot speak for themselves. See? Then again at the powwow in Porcupine. So I've been chosen two times. And that gives me the power and authority, the people's authority, see? So that is why, and they know, these people know, these Indian political people, these politicians, they know. That is why they don't want me to ask the questions to these senators, see? And if the United States government, he wants to... Uh, uh, do away with the IRA and the BIA, whoa, what a relief to me, you know? Then we're going to have to deal with a Secretary of the Interior. Maybe he'll serve us something, I don't know, you know, we don't know, but he could, they could they have to recognize as a Lakota nation, you know? That's what they have to do. Otherwise, they push us towards the welfare system. We have roots. We don't belong to the welfare system. We have a land here, and we got roots here. We are the Lakota people, the Lakota nation, you know. So 
we, he needs to either we do a new treaty, new contract, or fix that old one and repay everything to us. <laughs> See, like all the gold they took from the Black Hills. Homestead Mining Company wrote a book, and if you get that book, I forgot the name of the book, the title of the book, but in there it tells how much gold they gave us. See, so what happened to that? <laughs> so there's a schism between the members of the Lakota Nation who are within the system and those that are without, outside the system. I mean, that's why you were at Wounded Knee in 73. You were opposing what were known as the goons. Mm -hmm. True. That's why I had to support American Indian movement. Because American Indian movement woke us up and made us realize our rights. You know, I was a young man, very young man. So that's why I supported them. And I became of them. And I think like them. They said we need to know something. Russell Means says, if we feel lost and we don't know which way to turn, and everywhere the enemy around us grab that chalupa and smoke. And the answer will come from the ancestors, he said. <laughs> and those things work. They work. Now he's in the spirit world maybe with, you know, crazy horse or I don't know who, you know. <laughs> but see, that is why many of us like me, there's still people like me out there, you know, doing their work without a stipend or no fee. They, whatever they sell, they make something they sell. Whatever they come, they own gas money, they go. See? And the other government Indians, BIA Indians, I call them, they got a stipend check <laughs> because they watch our funds. <laughs> See? They have access to our funds, you know? And they, they, you know, they could have a meeting in Las Vegas and anywhere. See? And that is need to be stopped right there, you know. So, yeah, these things, you know, at Fort Laramie, on the 150th anniversary, I want to talk to these senators about these things I'm speaking about, you know. I want to tell them. I wanna, but they knew I'm the third speaker on that list, but they knew, so they put me way back there when everybody left. And when I mean everybody, all the government officials left, and they want me to talk. <laughs> you know. They didn't want you to stir it up. Exactly. Uh -huh. That's why that's why they didn't want me to talk. So now, uh, if you listen to this, and this is the report that's coming from me, what I experienced, you know. So after that, I packed up and left. See? I left. Because what's the use of just having a meeting with my relative? Nothing. No. I wanted to, people like me, the headsman, we wanted to meet with this... Washington officials say, hey, there is something wrong we want to say. You know? And this is how we want it, we want to say. Today, I could read and write and understand your laws of the English language. You know, see? Well, so this is, these are the things. That's what happened in Fort Laramie. And I came back over here. I was going to get on a radio, but I have a lot of things to do around my house, you know. Kili radio. radio, yeah, I wanted to come on her, you know, but uh, I didn't uh, call up there yet, but, you know, hopefully this gets on the YouTube soon enough so people could down, you know, they could watch this, and this is the report from me. I got phone calls, people ask me what happened, you know, and this is what happened back then, over there. See? When, did, when was that? April, the past April. That was the photos you were sending me yeah, of the exactly. horse. Uh -huh. Yeah, I, yeah. Mm -hmm. when. People refer to you as a headman. Uh -huh. Tell us what, what that means. Headsmen are like the senators. People put you there because you, you help people. You help without complaint. You give your last shirt on your back to the people. You know? You do these things. Great deed. When they made me a headman, they gave me a feather. I earned a feather. I had two feathers before that, so that's my third one, see? 
and uh, that's the way, you know. So I held the office of the head, one of the, one of the headmans of the Lakota, Dakota, Nakota nations, by Chief Leonard Crow Dog. See. So you're if Leonard Crow Dog as chief is the president. You as headman and others are senators. He doesn't want to be called president. He's the ambassador. Ambassador. Uh -huh. But you're also a medicine man. True. You're a healer. Yeah. And 1900 Lakota depend on your spiritual guidance. Is that accurate? Uh, not quite accurate. Today we got about 87,000 population. And how many of those? Probably you... little over half, I would say. Uh -huh. Over 40,000 people? Yeah, something around a little over. Come to you? That's, yeah, that's not counting the people outside of the reservation. See? Uh -huh. And all other race. That's not counting them. Just these ones here, like that. You know? And how, how do you handle that? I never think about it. I just do it from the heart and the mind and the spirit. You think about it, you could have ulcers. <laughs> <laughs> I'll get into a depression. <laughs> <laughs> so this is why you live the traditions of the Sundance, this is the vision quest, to mm -hmm. help people keep in touch, keep mm -hmm. the connection. Mm -hmm. Yeah. People really need to be connect or reconnect. Mm -hmm. Spirituality. Spirituality is a way of life too. See? It's not a religion. It's way different, you know. Can you explain that? Spirituality is, uh, uh, you could live, well, uh, you know, when you're happy, when you're happy, how does that make you feel? Good? Yeah. Uh -huh. And when you're upset, sad, what does that make you feel? Huh? Unhappy. True. See? And that's just how it is. It's uh, when you go outside, you're free. You're free, but you know, you give thanks. Nobody's going to force you. You do it yourself. At the right moment and the right time, when that spirit of wind comes and cleans you, then you give thanks to yourself. From your thanks have to start from you. Then it goes up, see, to the universe to everything that is life, and the life given itself, see? So spirituality is <laughs> much, much softer, stronger, gentle, and powerful, see? That's how it is. So one, if somebody forces you to read this and forces you to do this and that, that's not spirituality. That ain't. That's religion. Religion is like you have to stand. <laughs> See? That's religion. Look it up, religion. Where the word originated from. See? To obey, to follow. Exactly. Uh -huh. You regroup. And you have to restructure and follow one cause, one way. That's what religion is. See? And spirituality is the wind blows where it wants to go. See? So if you discover spirituality, now you become free for yourself. Now you feel the real freedom. See? But uh, until you, if you didn't find it, you know, seek it. Everybody needs to reconnect it. You know, everybody. I think it's fair to say that a, right now in America, there's a, there are a lot of people who are dispirited, uh -huh. who feel the, a lack of hope, a hopelessness. Oh, yeah, that's the... And it's not just political, it's no, socioeconomic. No, 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 no. I have to recorrect you. That all roots from the political. <laughs> to keep the public in control and in behavior. Like <laughs> what we're talking about, the artificial intelligence, you know? Why did they spirit it? Because 
the only way to keep you uh, keep you uh, uh, occupied, and you will obey. Oh, and spend some more days. You have to <laughs> live on this time and be over there on that time and get over here on this time, on this date. See, so <laughs> that route from everything Thank you. come. Thank you. From um, that was wonderful. Political. Thank you. So when they find the when they form the political parties, hey, huh, they they don't form the to be a better way of life. They form the so there'll never be no confederate and union again. See. Because Confederate and Union, uh, 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 we call that what the Civil War, right? Yeah, they clash. I mean, they really do, according to their history. You know, what is it? Fourteen, thirteen-year-old soldiers, see, some without training, see. Okay, so that's when. So when that's over, and Great Britain, everybody was over here. Huh? They sat down and they formed this political agenda called control of the mind. See? He is ornery. Give him a full glass of water so he'll settle down. How about he is happy? Uh, give him half a glass. See? This is how it runs. And this is how it is. And it's, it goes much deeper. <laughs> See? It goes much deeper. But those are their affairs, you know. It's not mine. Mine is the Lakota Nation and the Dakota and Dakota Nations. You've got your own 87,000 people to take care of. Yeah, that's the only thing. <laughs> See? But the, the direct, uh, direct them towards and on the Red Road. Chankuluta, we call it. See? Chankuluta is for all human beings that believe in the spiritual way of life see it all that's all there is see so anybody can do it yep if you're spiritual it'll take you to beautiful places it'll take you to beautiful people many beautiful spiritual stuff many things you know and pretty soon that when you go to these places and feel these places you will f fear nothing Nothing. They made it so that they made us feel uh, to fear death. But in our Lakota world, there's no death. Because we come to this planet for a temporary time and we'll be leaving here. <laughs> we call it the journey. <laughs> but that's how it is here. You know, I don't want to take your mind way deep into the deep, deep dark waters here, you know. Spend some more days. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is, uh, I'm just trying to do this report on the Fort Laramie issue. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and I, yeah, thank you for uh, doing this, you know. And thank you. Thank you. Um, that was wonderful. Thank you. Naho. Watch there.